New images of Jupiter have been released by NASA, taken using the world's newest and biggest space telescope. The James Webb Space Telescope took the photos last month, capturing infrared images showing unprecedented views of the solar system's biggest planet. For more, let's bring in live now Professor Virginia Kilbourne, Swinburne University's chief scientist. Professor, really appreciate your time. Thank you. We have the images Thank here to show our viewers, so we might bring us up so that you can describe for us what we're looking at. What did these images show? What did they tell us about Jupiter that perhaps wasn't clear before? Yeah, well, what we're seeing are these absolutely beautiful images that we haven't seen before um, of Jupiter taken in infrared light. Um, we can see there on the screen that you see the, the shining um, colours at the top and the bottom of um, Jupiter, and that's Jupiter's auroras. And that's when particles are interacting with the magnetic field of Jupiter. Um, we can also see the beautiful spot, the usually red, we see it in um, when we look at it through an optical telescope, but in infrared we can see the detail of the swirls around this um, uh, actual spot. Um, and also in that image um, where we zoomed out there, we can see the rings of Saturn. And what the astronomers are going to look at is how does uh, um, Jupiter rotate, how does it evolve, and how does that gas and heat transfer throughout the planet um, over time? Um, we're going to get um, detail that we haven't seen before. It's very, very exciting. Just back to Jupiter's great red spot, what do we know about what that is and, and how big it is? Well, it's bigger than Earth. It's several times of Earth. And what we know is that's lasted for um, hundreds, uh, at least as long as we've we've known Jupiter. Um, we think it is like a big whirl, whirlwind, um, I guess, um, on on Jupiter. And it's very interesting studying um, that that great red spot because that tells us something about the composition of the gas, um, the heat, um, the heat transfer in the planet, and just how the planet itself evolves. Um, the other thing that we can see in these images for the first time are, um, are clouds on Jupiter. So a bit like clouds on our own Earth. We're seeing clouds that are um, on the surface of Jupiter and they move at a slightly different rate to the, the rest of Jupiter. So we're going to be looking at, um, at those elements as well. This James Webb telescope is clearly just pretty extraordinary. What yep. else is it looking at? Where is it positioned exactly to get those sort of stunning views of the planets? So James Webb Space Telescope is about a million miles um, from Earth, so it's a, a long way away. Um, and it's looking in um, the infrared light, that's redder light than we um, see with our eyes. And that allows us to look um, at much um, further in the universe, so we can look at very, very distant galaxies. Um, it's also very big. You can see in those images, it's made up of 18 hexagonal um, mirrors. That's about 6.5 metres in diameter. So that's much bigger than the Hubble Space Telescope, which is um, about 1.5 metres in diameter. Um, and so we can see really fine detail and we can see very far back in, in the early universe. Um, one of the first results that we found is really distant galaxies. Um, in fact, they seem to be so distant that they're too distant for our current theories. And that's made astronomers go back and look at whether or not what we're seeing with the telescope is what is um, being interpreted correctly. And we've had to recalibrate the telescope. It's actually working a little bit better than what we expected. So we're... Um, also looking at things like star formation regions, planets, um, and the formation and evolution of galaxies. So it's very exciting times. It does seem particularly exciting at the moment, Professor. We've got NASA's moon launch just days away as well. I know that'll be a huge event for avid space watchers. It does seem like NASA and, and other space agencies are really in a period at the moment where they are making leaps and bounds. Is that, is that right? That's right. And a lot of these projects have been in the works for many, many years. So um, James Webb Space Telescope, um, it's been uh, in the works for about 25 years. So we're finally seeing the, uh, the payback from that. The Artemis mission, um, where we've got the, um, the rocket launching on Monday to go and orbit the moon. Um, so the NASA's um, 
start of NASA's return to the moon um, has been many, many years in the making. Um, and that launch is just the first of a series of launches that are going to set NASA back on a path of landing humans on the moon. And the exciting thing about that is they're really looking at having a diverse population of astronauts. So um, we, we should land our first woman on the moon, our first person of colour. And this is um, really important so that we can actually have um, uh, inspiration for our um, upcoming scientists and astronauts, uh, who, budding astronauts who want to go to the moon and can see themselves um, in that career or at least inspired by those journeys that are coming up. Yeah, inspiration is exactly the right word for it. I think it's all just fascinating stuff. Looking forward to all the uh, coverage of that moon mission next week. That'll be great to see. Professor Virginia Kilbourne, really appreciate you joining us. Thanks for your time. Thanks so much.